to Paint Cool Stuff. This is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio. Today we're going to do a really cool character portrait painting. Starting from the blank canvas on this one, we'll go from start to finish to give you a quick look at my general process for this kind of project. We'll touch on some great stuff like conceptualization, values, and eventually rendering realistic skin tones. So we start with the sketch. Here we're just thinking about big picture questions that we want to answer. What kind of character is this? What is their personality? What kind of story do we want them to tell? We're not at all worried about brush strokes or making nice looking marks at this point. Just getting ideas out on the canvas. Remember that the digital medium is infinitely reworkable. So experiment, edit, just feel your way through until something starts to speak to you and you can build on that. Photoshop and just about all digital painting apps have some really powerful editing tools, but Liquify might be my favorite. You can bring this up by hitting Command Shift X. It allows you to push and pull any of your sketch lines around, and as you can see, this can really let you fine tune your design with a great deal of control. A super powerful tool. After some refinement and cleaning up, this sketch is just about ready to go. He's got just the right level of personality and stylization for what I'm after. Some fun exaggerated features and proportions, super angular masculine features with this large square jaw. Fun stuff, and it's got pretty solid perspective so I think we're about ready to block this one in and begin our next steps. Okay, so now we are really switching modes. I've blocked in our sketch to make a silhouette, and now it's time to start thinking three-dimensionally and about how light would illuminate the various shapes and surfaces that comprise this face. Once we establish our light source, it's just a matter of adding higher values to the planes facing the light source and leaving lower values on the planes facing away. Light and shadow are how we're going to trick our viewer's eye into reading this as a three-dimensional form. I like to paint values with this bright orange color, but it's totally arbitrary. We could be working in grayscale right now, since we're going to be converting this to skin tones later. All we're thinking about at this phase is value, light and dark. So, now that we have a pretty solid value painting, and this guy is looking pretty believably three-dimensional, it's time to convert this value painting into some more realistic looking skin tones. First, we just do a hue saturation adjustment, Command U, to our value painting, and we make it a really high key, pale yellow, essentially a yellowish off-white. Then we make a new layer underneath the value layer, and we selectively paint in some reddish tones to areas of the face. This creates this nice variation in hue, where we have some areas of the face with redder tones, and some left with more of a cyan tone showing through. When done with a little finesse and subtlety, this hue variation really gives the impression of realistic skin tones. Now 
that our skin tones have come together and are looking fairly polished, it's time to start thinking about some secondary details like the eyes and hair. These can have a huge impact on the way your character comes across, so it's worth spending some time to get these features just right. We go into a great deal of detail on this process in my Painting Faces course, some really great stuff. Secondary light sources like edge lights and bounced reflected lights can really help to round out your character and make them seem even more three-dimensional. They can also add a really cinematic quality and make things really dramatic. You can tell a story with the colors you choose too. For example, if we wanted to suggest this guy was in battle or something, we could make these reflected lights fiery orange. Lots of information we can communicate with just a few marks. Really powerful stuff. With a little bit of final polish, this guy is just about done. We add a bit of texture and some detailed brush marks just to give his face some interest and pop. Once we clean things up and do a few final presentation steps, this guy is just about finished. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked this one. Be sure to check us out next time or head over to digitalpaintingstudio.com for loads of digital painting tutorials and resources. Until next time, good luck with your artwork.